Well, welcome back. Um, it, we've we've been talking a lot about the wave equation, and we've been taking a look at it from uh, several different perspectives, and we've gained some useful insights into the relationships of uh, wave propagation to the mechanical properties of the medium through which the wave is propagating. And the most uh, recent form of the wave equation that we worked with, we provided a relationship between pressure variations and particle velocity uh, variations. And we noted that the general uh, general solutions to the wave equation were of the form uh, P of X minus VT or V of X minus uh, VT. And we're also clarifying or emphasizing that we're making a distinction between little v, which we're going to be assuming is the uh, using as the particle displacement, uh, the <clears throat> little particles in the medium. These could be grains or crystals or um, atoms or molecules, however you want to think about it. We're thinking about that motion and the capital V we're using as the uh, velocity of the wave which is uh, propagating through the through the subsurface. So we'll be using uh, using that no notation as we as we go forward. And um, so while these solutions here, x minus vt and v of x minus vt, p of x minus vt, these are uh, pressure disturbances that are propagating in the positive x direction. When we have x minus vt, we're looking back to see what the shape of the disturbance was at some point uh, uh, earlier in, in time, so similarly for v. And here we're looking at... Uh, well, in general, we're going to have a superposition of upgoing and downgoing waves. So we would expect that uh, P of X plus VT and V of X plus VT are also going to be solutions. And uh, as well as a superposition of uh, P of X minus VT and P of X plus VT, because we're going to have a reflected um, wave fields superimposed on downgoing wave fields. And, and uh, so on. So it's going to be a complicated combination of uh, upgoing and downgoing wave fields. Now we started uh, earlier. We developed uh, several characteristics of wave propagation, and um, in particularly we have in particular we had a relationship that uh, came from Newton's second law, uh, and this this kind of described uh, pressure variations. Um, the, the fact that pressure variations produce particle displacements. And we can express that in the form minus dp dx is equal to rho zero dv dt. And this is just uh, the acceleration here. And we're taking uh, d chi dt. We're using chi as the displacement, as we did earlier on. And d chi dt then is uh, the uh, velocity. So we have dv dt, uh, particle velocity. Uh, dv dt, we're looking at the acceleration of individual particles. So here we have um, this relationship that we're working from, and uh, but also recall that we can take the uh, second derivative with respect to x. So we have this equation here, we'll differentiate it with respect to x once again. So we have d2p dx squared is equal to rho zero dt d dt dv dx and the the order of differentiation here um, doesn't change the outcome it's uh, uh, commutative so we can we can differentiate with respect to the spatial coordinate first or with respect to the temporal coordinate and that's not going to change the result for us and then we can substitute um, the relationship that we had for dv dx, so we have that uh, dv dx is equal to minus 1 over k dp dt, and uh, using that relationship, uh, substituting back into this expression over here, we came up with this form of the wave equation. And uh, here in particular, we're going to be looking at uh, the relationship between the pressure gradient and the acceleration, but this is uh, kind of a development from this particular relationship. Uh, to the wave equation, just as a reminder, and then we're going to be taking a look at this uh, uh, specific uh, differential uh, relationship. 
So we're taking the derivative, the spatial derivative of pressure, which is a function of x minus vt, and this would be equal to the equilibrium density times the derivative of the particle velocity as a function of x minus vt is also uh, with respect to time. But we assume that p and v are varying as x minus vt. So we have uh, a relationship like this where dp of x dx is equal to rho zero d of x minus vt dt would be equal to minus rho zero times the velocity. Now this negative sign comes out because we're differentiating the velocity with respect to its argument, x minus vt. So we have a minus rho zero v d v d x minus vt. We're taking the derivative of the velocity with respect to the argument x minus vt. So we end up getting a relationship like this where we have um, p prime, uh, the derivative of uh, x with respect to its, uh, the variable x minus vt is equal to rho v v prime x minus vt. And our differentiation, the differentiation that, we've, that we're going through here is a, a two-step chain rule type differentiation. So we're taking the derivative of the particle velocity variation as a function of x minus vt with respect to x. So we do that in two steps. We have minus dp of x minus vt with respect to x minus vt times d of x minus vt dx, which just gives us p prime, this term here, times 1. And I left out my uh, minus sign there. But um, for the upgoing wave, um, we've got, got it in this form here, where we have p prime of x plus vt is equal to minus z v prime of x plus vt. So the only way we can really satisfy these two relationships that we have here is if p is equal to plus or minus the density times the propagation velocity times the particle velocity. And um, this is the relationship that, that we'll use in order to establish, uh, uh, to determine what the uh, reflection and transmission coefficients are. But this product, this term here, rho times v, again, is just uh, z, the acoustic impedance. And just kind of briefly as a footnote, if we were to plug in quantities uh, such as p of x minus vt into the wave equation that we have down here, go through this differentiation process, we would end up with the fairly trivial result that p double prime is equal to p double prime. So up to this point, we've been using the wave equation as a description of wave propagation in a homogeneous medium. And what we'd like to do would be to generalize our description of wave propagation so that we can characterize how, wave propagate, how waves propagate in a multi-layered system. And we're going to do that by using the relationship that we developed above that the particle or that the uh, pressure would be equal to plus or minus rho v v. So we're looking at the relationships between pressure and particle velocities above and below the interface. And the first condition to be satisfied in an interface, a, a boundary condition, is that the total pressures above and below the interface are, must be equal to each other. We'll come back to this in a second. but. But if we look at, uh, we have two media here, one with density rho 1, v1, uh, velocity v1, and impedance z1 equal to rho 1, v1. And in this, this second medium, we have um, a density rho 2, v2, and uh, impedance z2. So for our downgoing incident wave, we have the incident uh, pressure, a function of x minus v1. And we must know from this relationship up here that the particle velocity, the instant particle velocity, should be equal to the incident pressure over the impedance. The transmitted pressure and particle velocity would be P sub t and V sub t. And again, using this relationship over here, so that we're expressing everything in terms of the pressures in this case, 
we get that the transmitted particle velocity would be equal to p sub i times x minus v2t over z2. And then we have the reflected wave. So the wave is propagating up towards the surface, so the net particle displacement is negative in this, uh, in this case. So we have positive um, wave propagation in the downward direction for waves propagating upward. Uh, there, the particle velocity, the net particle velocity is um, uh, negative, going in the negative x direction. So this reflected particle velocity then is equal to minus uh, the re reflected pressure as a function of x plus v1 times t over z1. So we have these different relationships at the boundary that we have to honor. And so here, uh, again, we've restated these relationships. And just noting here that there's a requirement, basically, for continuity of displacement across the interface. In other words, the, this interface is, it doesn't tear, to tear apart. It's not like a couple sheets of paper flapping in the, in the wind. They're moving um, uh, in unison with each other. There's no separation or slippage along the boundary. And this fact translates, and we can translate that into two boundary conditions, one of which, as noted, is the equality of the uh, pressures, and secondly, the total particle velocities above and below the interface that must be equal. And so we have these two equations here. P sub i plus P sub r should be equal to the transmitted pressure, and V sub i plus V sub r should be equal to the transmitted particle velocity along the interface. So if we make substitutions, uh, P is equal to rho VV, uh, we're actually solve for V is P over uh, Z. Then with these two equations up here become these two equations. This is the same equation, however, over here, we have just replaced V with P over the impedance. So we have P sub I over Z1 minus P sub R over Z1 is equal to P sub T over Z2. So we have these uh, two equations, and they can be rearranged so that we have the incident pressure on the right. So these would be, this would be the pressure of the downgoing wave. And then we have the uh, transmitted pressure and reflected pressure uh, over on the left. So we have two equations with two unknowns. And we can rewrite these as, uh, we can divide both sides of um, this equation by P sub i, the same down here by P sub i. So if we let's take a look at the first equation, we get P sub t over P sub i minus P sub r over P sub i is equal to 1. P sub t over P sub i and P sub r over P sub i are just equal to t and r, and these are just, this is just the notation that we'll use to represent the transmission and reflection coefficients. And then we can do the same for the second equation here. So we have P sub t over P sub i, which is going to be the transmission coefficient over z2, be this term. And we have P sub r over P sub i, which would be the reflection coefficient over z1. And this would be equal to 1 over z1. So we can now rewrite these two equations as t minus r is equal to 1, and t over z2 plus r over z1 is equal to 1 over z1. So again, we have two equations and two unknowns. Uh, we have the coefficient matrix here, 1 minus 1, just looking at the coefficients here, 1 over z2, 1 over z1. And it's determinant. You should be able to work this out, or you can refer back to some of the matrix uh, math modules, uh, we, we end up uh, with this the determinant of the coefficient matrix being z1 plus z2 over z1, z2. So we can solve for r and t by replacing the r and t terms with the constants on the right side of the equation, these constants here. So if we want to solve for r, we can replace these constants with 1 and 1 over z1, as we have down here. And then in order to determine, uh, in order to determine what r is, we take the determinant of this matrix 
and divide it by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So the determinant of this matrix is 1 over z1 minus 1 over z2. And this is just equal to z2 minus z1 over z1, z2. We take this determinant and divide it by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. And that gives us z2 minus z1 over z1, z2 divided by z1 plus z2 over z1, z2. And of course, these terms cancel out. And we end up with the reflection coefficient being equal to z2 minus z1 over z1 plus z2. I think you, you know, a lot of you have, have probably seen this many times before, but this is uh, one way in which we come up with this particular relationship. A familiar relationship, I'm sure, to many of you. Now we can also solve for t and in the same fashion. So we've already calculated the coefficient matrix, but now we're solving for the t term. So we're going to be taking the coefficients over here on the right, substituting them for the coefficients over here uh, associated with the transmissivity term. So we have one. 1 over z1 in this matrix. And that gives us 2 over z1. And we have 2 over z1 divided by the coefficient matrix. It gives us 2 over z1 over z1 plus z2 divided by z1, z2, which gives us that the transmission coefficient is 2z2 over z1 plus z2. And so we have the reflection coefficient. And these, we're looking at uh, pressure. Uh, we could also develop, uh, and I'll ask you to, to try and do this, but we could develop reflection and transmission coefficients for the particle velocity as well, but the reflection and transmission coefficients for pressure are z2 minus z1 over z1 plus z2, and 2z2 over z1 plus z2. So the next time uh, we will go through this um, um, process of deriving the velocity reflection and transmission coefficients. And, but I'd ask you to take a, um, take a look at, um, at this and, and see if you can um, see, if you, see what you come up with. You will be working from this equation over here, v sub r plus v sub t is equal to v sub i. And minus p sub r plus p sub t is equal to p sub i. And we'll be using this relationship over here and substituting, replacing the pressures with uh, uh, terms which uh, have the variable uh, v or the particle velocity. Uh, last time we replaced the particle velocity terms with pressure and came up with the reflection and transmission coefficients for the pressure wave disturbance. So, um, thanks for joining us and take a look at this, see what you can come up with, and um, uh, we'll uh, see you next time.